brush and this is my final project for art history 20. For my opening statement and for the purpose of the project, um, the topic I chose was art during the Renaissance period and how there was a shift in the depiction of the human anatomy. To show this shift, I will be looking at two statues by Michelangelo. The two statues that we will be discussing are David and Bacchus. And I will further uncover why Michelangelo found the human anatomy so intriguing and how his work affects society um, today. Uh, before we get into the Renaissance era, which was the area of the era of art that we are going to be talking about, I want to touch on the medieval period really quick. So during the medieval period, art was highly influenced by the church and by religion. Uh, a lot of Bright colors and luxurious materials were used. Um, and many times the subject matters were of the art were Christian and um, Catholic subjects. However, after the medieval time, there was a change in uh, what was being depicted through the art community and a lot of artists started to draw away from depicting religion and started depicting every single day life. This was around the early 14th century, and this is what we came to know as the Renaissance period. Um, one aspect of the Renaissance period that was very important, um, in which the medieval period did not touch a lot on, was the human anatomy and the human form. Um... An artist, one artist that was the leading cause in depicting and, fi and finding the human form so intriguing was Leonardo da Vinci. It was said that it was said that Leonardo da Vinci during his time uh, dissected thirty corpses to get an understanding of what the human anatomy looked like, and many of his students and a lot of other artists during that time period followed in his footsteps and did the same one artist being michelangelo so moving on i want to touch upon the a really quick background for michelangelo he was born on march 6 1475 uh, and later in his life when he was a young boy he became apprentice um for Don dominic and david Galeriandos uh, for their workshop. He eventually entered Ber Bertados School for Sculptors, and many years down the line, he created his first statue, or he created his statue for Galli. And um, it was this statue that we will be talking about, which is Bacchus. So, just for some context, Bacchus is a Greek god. And, um, he, or he's a Roman god and he was the god of wine. He stood at 80 inches high. Um, and he was first commissioned by Cardinal Raphael Riaro. Um, however, the Cardinal ended up rejecting this statue because he found that it was very disconcerting and very disrespectful in Michelangelo's portrayal of it. Um, in Michelangelo's sculpture, the sculpture seems to be tipsy um, and in a teetering way. His body is given a very curvy and soft appeal to it, which um, was not prevalent in many of the statues of the gods at the time many of the roman and greek gods were depicted as strong forces um which was seen through the use of muscles uh in which the sculptors or artists depicted um within the definition of either the torso or the back and this sculpture doesn't as seen in the picture doesn't really portray those coarse, intense muscles, um, showing strength. And another thing to note was Michael, the way that Michelangelo depicted the sculpture's face, um, the god of wine, Bacchus, his eyes are kind of rolling 
and um, overall the depiction of the sculpture was seen as very disrespectful. Um, just for for the mention of the elements, uh, one thing that Michelangelo does in fact incorporate in this is the symmetry seen in the god, which is seen in his um, features such as the symmetrical way that his body is positioned, how he's reining, leaning on one side, but his arm is up on the other, um, and just the straight lines that Michelangelo uses provides a lot of symmetry in it. Uh, finally, one last interesting thing to note about this work is the fact that Bacchus is missing his genitals, which is a very interesting thing that Michelangelo chose to do during that time because it takes away power from the god of the Roman god Bacchus. Uh, now, moving on, I want to, we're going to switch gears and talk about the statue of David. Um, this statue is a lot more focused on the anatomy compared to Bacchus. Uh, and it is, its medium is marble and it stands at 16 feet tall and 10 and a half inches. Um, it was said that in order to get the great detail in David's face, Michelangelo um, ended up using a wax model in which he drew on the face of a block and then carved it back or and then carved back from the face to create a f frontal figure. Uh, this, the detail that is seen in David's facial features, um, gives a sight into his psyche, um, and Michelangelo was well known for depicting very psychological and, um, emotional features onto the faces of his sculptures, which was also seen in Bacchus, um, through the way that his eyes rolled. Um, however, what is really stands out about David is the way that Michelangelo, um, ended up shaping his body. Now, his torso was given a very Hellenistic um, feel to it in which his muscles and the way that his um, torso is portrayed, he's seen as a very strong and powerful individual. Um, and um, the way he's standing is in a counterpose position or contrapesto pose, which just means that he's in an asymmetrical arrangement. Um, as seen in his limbs, he's leaning slightly one way with his arm drawn up and on the other side, much like Bacchus was. Um, and this pose, um, the position that he's in, just gives the statue a very humanistic and natural look and feeling to it. Um... And that pretty much wraps up David. Now, I'm going to go into why Michelangelo found um, the human depiction and the human body so intriguing. Uh, a lot of people believe that it was because of Michelangelo's many health issues. So, growing up, Michelangelo had um, nephropathy, terminal illnesses, and uric acid, acid, stone, acid stones, along with many other illnesses. So it was thought that if he was able to understand and dissect and create the human anatomy, um, on his pieces of art, he would be able to understand his body and what was going on with his anatomy, um, m much better. Um, and um his therefore his health problems contributed to his interest in the human body and his meticulous depictions of the human forms in his statues um as mentioned earlier um he michelangelo incorporated a lot of psychological insight and physical realism into his artistry and work now i want to talk about um how his intrigue ended up influencing the today um, and art an artist today. So in Lori Kent's journal, enlivening, enlivening the old with the new 21st century thinking applied, um, the author states that very old practices are still very influential. 
meaning that teachers and artists are able to form their own opinions of certain great works and create their own interpretations of that work um, and can create new stories and kind of um, put their own spin and twist on great arts um, and what art artists from years and years ago are trying to portray. Um, and a lot of artists that took Michelangelo's form uh, of portraying the human body um, are artists such as Simon Kocher, Caroline Pira, Carl Chapel, and Vladimir Zunkin. Um, as seen in the illustrations um, provided, all of these artists rely heavily on the human form, um, whether it's the soft curvature of a woman's body or the rigid structure of a, of a strong male. Um, they all focus greatly on how the human anatomy is portrayed and um, how, it def- how it reflects the overall work. And that is all for my project. Um, here's my works cited page. I used three books. The first one was Howard Hibber, Michelangelo's second, second edition. I used Lutwood's Goldshire's Michelangelo's painting, sculptures, architect and architecture. Um, and John T. Palatti's um, art and Jerry M. Radke's art, Renaissance in Italy. Um, for the websites, I used totallyhistory.com. I used... Um, Science Direct, and I use the Gunham Museums uh, and Foundation. And for my journal, um, I referred to a, an article by Lori Kent, um, which was titled Enlivening the Old with the New 21st Century Thinking Applied to the 16th Century Art and Worlds. Thank you so much. That wraps up this video. Um, <laughs>